All right, everyone, we are going to move the discussion over here to enterprise applications and single sign on should be a short and sweet one here. Hopefully we can uh, move through this one pretty quickly. Uh, it's not unfortunately a lot to demo, but we can do a little bit of security around it. So first and foremost, let's start talking about uh, enterprise applications. What the heck are they? Well, <clears throat> an enterprise application would be a third party application. Uh, that exists that people use and this could be lots of different things ranging from a uh, and like an ERP system uh, and, or a CRM system or something where users would log into this could be a custom application where users would log into with a separate set of credentials they would log in for their day-to-day -day activities that they need to do for their job well on premise our current ways of doing it is using uh, I should be <laughs> kind of switched there. Uh, there's three main options. The first one is using LDAP, which is Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Um, not necessarily the most secure. However, it's fine if you're inside the network. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we can use federation services. So federation services allow us to uh, essentially use Active Directory federation services, or there's a couple other ones that are out there, but essentially publish the application through those. So then it integrates with Active Directory. Uh, or the other one, and this is probably one of the more common scenarios, are using separate accounts, completely separate accounts. We have our Active Directory account, and we have our ERP account, uh, or we have, you know, all of these other ones. Well, that's our on-prem way of doing things right now. Most secure form of this is the using Federation services here, or separate accounts, you know, depending on what you want to say with that, may or may not be. Uh, but what do we do in the cloud? Well, we have this wonderful little diagram here that essentially takes Azure Active Directory and makes it as the, uh, think of it as the hub to all of the spokes. Uh, all of these spokes could be external cloud applications, external identities, your own custom business applications, and then on-premise applications. So we have lots of ways of being able to take that and publishing everything through Azure Active Directory. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, again, this is truly single sign-on. So single sign-on means I'm using the same exact Active Directory credentials, same username, same password for all of these applications. And the other part that's really awesome about it is when we publish an application through Azure Active Directory, uh, we're allowed to use those features that we have seen. So like conditional access policies or multi-factor authentication, we're able to use all of that. When Azure Active Directory is the identity provider for all of these, we can use all of those. We can get full audit logs around conditional, or excuse me, around uh, sign-in logs. Uh, we can see, the, again, use conditional access policies, multi-factor authentication, the machine learning pieces, all of those things we can do uh, by publishing our applications through it. We have on-premise applications here that are done through a app, Azure application uh, app proxy is what it's called. Uh, and essentially that one takes whatever, maybe it's a on-premise custom server that you have, uh, and it takes that processes that request and shoots it up to Azure Active Directory. Uh, your own Business application, again, these could be custom ones, these could be CRM systems, they could be whatever that you have on premise. We can publish those through uh, the app proxy as well. We have third party cloud applications, maybe use Box or G Suite, DocuSign, as you can see, these ones that are on here, Salesforce, SAP, maybe other cloud based CRM systems or whatever it is, we can publish those through Azure Active Directory. Same thing here with our external identities around Twitter, Facebook, Ping Federate, all of these different things are on here. We essentially make it the source of authentication for everybody. Well, how do they connect? We saw that there was the three main authentication mechanisms for when it's on premise. Well, we use essentially three main protocols in the cloud. And each one's a tiny bit different, and I'm not going to dive deep in it because they do require to know quite a lot about how uh, applications themselves can connect through API calls or through URIs, whatever it may be. Uh, so the protocols used here are going to be OAuth uh, 2.0. We're going to use OpenID Connect or OIDC, uh, and then SAML 2.0. So essentially, these are industry standard. They're secure ways of connecting. Uh, they're, most of them are going to be through a certificate-based connection where we're transferring tokens amongst each other. So these are the industry ways of, uh, we'll say the industry standard ways of securing our transmissions between servers there. Well, inside of Office 365, we have the ability to spin up lots of different applications. And we also, and again, with that enablement factor, have our uh, users are able to uh, consent on their own behalf to uh, essentially have these applications 
access their stuff. So again, Facebook or Twitter or any of those other ones, they have the ability to essentially say, yes, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you can have access to my stuff. You can never consent to the entire organization unless you're an administrator. Uh, only administrators can do that, specific administrators at that. So Microsoft has this admin consent workflow. This is where users can essentially go through a, uh, a workflow where they have to request access. Like, hey, we want to use this SAP uh, app plugin through Azure Active Directory. Can we do it? And it works through this automated app where the administrators can go through, verify it, test its security, and make, it, make sure it's feasible, uh, and then allow the users to use it. So there's a lot of things that we can do here. But with the admin consent workflow is actually what we're going to set up. It's really simple. So our next lab here should be really uh, quite uh, simple. Uh, this is just a relatively small one here. I can't really show you a whole lot. Unfortunately, I'll give you just a high level overview of what enterprise apps are in there. But apart from that, since we don't have access to any of them, uh, it's really can't use a lot of them here, unfortunately. But with that being said, that's all for this particular lecture. Moving on to the lab.